tonight we have Claude Sharon from the um, from the Conrad Challenge, and um, the Conrad Challenge really sponsors uh, STEM innovation and entrepreneurship um, in schools with kids. And if you think about where we want kids to, you know, we, where, the opportunities we all want for kids, it's to be able to take charge of their lives and to be very adaptable as the economy and a society changes. And these are the skills that uh, they, they develop through the Conrad Challenge. So Claude, I'm gonna turn it over to you and thank you for coming. Absolutely, thank you for having me. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, grab my, share my screen. Okay, so just a little background on myself. I've been involved with the Conrad Foundation for the last 10 years and have been able to uh, do, uh, uh, been invited to the, the summit with several teams and we were able to get uh, a lot of our projects to the end users. Several of our projects are are now in uh, developing countries. One is an energy system that takes manure into usable energy. And the, our flagship one is the a water system that's in seven different uh, countries that is providing clean water in areas where there is no electricity or uh, access to clean water. So, um, and these were created by students? These were created by students. Uh, wow. it, it was entered in, uh, and I'm gonna show that in a few minutes okay. to that little, um, that little study. So. Uh, what I'm going to show you is an, a story, and then we're going to connect it back to the Conrad Foundation uh, in regards to um, in regards to how to go into the uh, Conrad uh, Challenge and what category that would uh, correspond to. So, um, Molly, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, next one. Okay, so the the project I'm referring to is called Operation Gulliver International, and uh, and that was our first model that you're seeing in that screen. And, and it was uh, a rudimentary design. It was before we entered in, like I would say about a month into the Conrad uh, challenge. And then we realized there were some issues, but the, the issues came about when uh, the judges from the Conrad Foundation made some recommendations and considerations. So next slide. And one of the uh, recommendations was to get an end user, uh, get a pr protection, uh, a patent, a provisional patent, and uh, we were able to acquire that. Uh, and the foundation provided some assistance with that. Next slide. Okay, and then they also gave us a plan. Like this is some of the considerations you would want to do if you're really going to uh, fabricate something. And to the far bottom left, the bottom right, um, that was what we had when we got there. Next slide, please. Okay, and then based on the recommendations and feedback we got from the foundation, uh, we actually had a fully operational and workable one that was redesigned based on judges' feedback. So we, we, it was an amazing experience in 2012, and in 2014, we were able to deploy them uh, to seven different countries based on the feedback. Next slide. And how old were the kids? Okay, uh, that's an excellent question. So the, the competition, uh, uh, it's from 13 to 17, 18, I think it's 18, if they, if they are turning 18, because it's in high school, uh, high school kid, and I do think if you're 13 and you're not in high school, you can still participate. So that was basically our uh, age bracket as well, 16 to 18 year olds, okay? Okay. So what you're seeing in the screen now is one of the biggest things we had to be able to do is we had to be able to ship it and we had to be able to have them use it without any tools. And uh, we also needed to find areas where they actually can use it. So one of them being the Philippines, next slide. Okay, Haiti, Kasai, and then those, those videos will actually show the people using the device. So, and then to the, to the left side, you see the, uh, that is, the, that is uh, um, Dr. Franco Jean Luis, who is the pastor for the, in, in Haiti. And he helped us bring the water system there, and it was a great honor. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and uh, more on the patent and being able to connect to people worldwide was such a big deal. That was one of our students talking to the people in Nigeria uh, in regards to how to use it. Uh, they're really interesting side story to that at a different time. Next uh, slide. Okay, and uh, that was a fully rendered one that we, we ended up sending. Next. Okay, how so many, how many years ago was this? Like this was in 2012, and it's gone through three or four different um, um, uh, redesigns to accommodate 
uh, specific locations around the world. So for example, the Philippines had different constraints uh, uh, compared to Nigeria. Nigeria had different constraints compared to Haiti. Uh, everything from the feces that was in the water or if it was cholera and uh, filters would have to be different and a couple things had to be changed. So it's been, it's gone through several different um, modifications and changes and and that's one of the things being able to document through the process and and present this in a you know in a, in the summit uh, it taught these kids and myself to to really hand over to the next group so this was a continuation project for for several years in fact at, we're still doing it today and at the time that you were leading this with the kids were you a science teacher were you a um, yeah no I was an engineering teacher department chair and uh, we we uh, competed in several we had several teams that year um, and uh, this was one of them and we it, it happened we got interested because of what happened to Haiti it got hit by four hurricanes and one earthquake in one year so everybody was sending bottled waters and it wasn't getting to the end users and that's what really provided the inspiration for the kids to do it and uh, I honestly I didn't think we were gonna do it be able to do it but you know kids working with kids and and when they're passionate um, and you give them the right tools and Point them in the right direction it's amazing what they can do so you know that prompts me to the question that's on here like what kind of issues do student teams encounter as they work through and one of the things that uh, i've realized going through the process is the biggest challenge as a coach or a teacher uh, that i've heard from other teachers is is getting a team to work together uh, finding an idea that's uh, finding a, a, a problem that's worth solving and staying motivated to do that the whole year, right? And uh, most importantly, it's not about winning, it's about doing the process correctly and getting feedback and sharing and, and moving forward. So, so <clears throat> that's one of the things that uh, as a teacher and a mentor, uh, being able to acquire skills through the process of how do, we, how do we get students to work together? How do we empower teachers to teach entrepreneurship and model the design process, right? Because you can't really teach the design process. Uh, you have to model it, you, you know, and the best example I like to, to share is, uh, is like a hitting coach, right? Um, you can't really teach someone how to hit. You've got to kind of coach them how to hit a ball. And it's the same thing with the process. Well, wait a minute. I read a book on hitting and I'm sure that I can just get up and hit. I'm pretty sure you probably can. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so so some of the things, some of the, the two most popular questions I get, you know, because I, I, I run a Slack channel for, for the Conrad Foundation called the No Box Toolbox Slack channel, and that provides support to, to, to uh, teams. And I'm getting a lot of questions, and it's been the same questions over and over. It's like, how much help should I give my students? How do I introduce a topic without it being my topic, you know? So um, <clears throat> I'll address that one because I always find it interesting. Um, that's actually an excellent question. You know, being able to understand the problem and phrasing it a way to attack it is gigantic. And in a minute, I'll show you the, the website and how you can maneuver through the tools. <clears throat> but being able to have the kids take ownership of their problem is a key, right? If it's, it's coming from an adult or a company, it's not going to have the same, you know, the same meaning. So the kids, you know, the, the, the projects that I've seen successful are the, the projects that are associated with empathy right? Helping the end user, making a measurable difference, proving that it's a measurable difference. And uh, I think that's what the Conrad Foundation uh, resonates to. It's like, you got to get it done. It's not, just a, it's not just business and it's not just engineering. It's both, right? It's entrepreneurship and it's design coming together to produce a real innovation that people would, uh, would invest in, right? So that's what we do that I think is so unique. There are engineering companies, uh, challenges that focus on just engineering and then there's there's entrepreneur challenges that just focus on entrepreneurship but the Conrad <clears throat> challenge brings them both together uh, and uh, how cool is it have a business plan that actually has proof that it will work right so opposed to projecting on and just um, the, the kids that you work with in 2013 have you followed them at all Yes, actually, uh, the kids, um, they're all doing, <laughs> big surprise, doing very well. Um, I actually follow, I think I'm up to 200 students from the Conrad alumni group that I follow through via LinkedIn, and uh, it's great. You know, the, the experiences they had with uh, the Conrad Foundation, uh, <clears throat> being able to go through a process of working to 
with people that are different <clears throat> and being able to come together and to be persistent and not to give up. All of these are everybody that goes to the summit understands that. So these kids really bond with each other more so than some of the kids they, that they probably don't bond with that in their own school, right? So that's what they have in common. Most of these teams have, you know, not to scare anybody, but some of these teams have spent over 100 hours. Individuals have spent over 100 hours. Do you need to spend 100 hours? Not necessarily, but it's because they enjoy it. They enjoy the process. They want to learn more. They really want to get it to another level. Um, when we have kids, you know, average two hours a week and they'll be fine. But uh, in my experience, when you get these kids hooked on something, they just keep going and going. And my impression is that this is not just for, you know, the kids who are in the top classes, that, you know, some of these kids are really surprising that you may not have expected that they, that they had the grit or they had the inspiration or that they were willing to uh, accomplish something and that you've seen really incredible growth from them, right? Well, that's, that's actually a good point. That is a misconception, right? <clears throat> that uh, AP students are the ones that you want. Uh, and the reality is <clears throat> the top scoring kids probably don't want, don't have time to do things like this. Ironically, it's the ones in the middle, the ones, couple of people on the top, couple of people on the bottom. And, and, so, and if you can get them engaged and, and really believe that they're, this is a problem that they should pursue and, and you give them the tools to go through that process, it's so much more important. <clears throat> you, you really, the work ethic and respect <clears throat> and being able to, um, to follow a process and respect that is, is I think the key, you know, so, but you do need skill sets, right? There's no question. The better you can, you know, you can articulate, write, <clears throat> design, you know, if you have CAD skills, if, uh, if you have a, a, a workshop, um, a shop room, uh, it does, it does help. No question about it. You know, one of the teams that kept on coming, uh, there was a team from Miami that, that kept on coming year after year. And their secret was that the business, uh, program they had there was at a, at a real top level. So in the, in the bit, when they had to write the business plan, they were always up there in the top, right? So there's different skill sets that are absolutely, you can see at the top tier, but, uh, overall it's a mixture. It's a, it's a, it's a combination of skill sets. <clears throat> Okay, uh, next slide, uh, uh, Molly, please. Can I jump in on one thing, Claude, yes. real quick? Yes. So there is a common misconception, and this is Molly. I'm staff of the Conrad Foundation in the Conrad Challenge, so I'm going to chime in just in, in and out a little bit. Um, there is a common misconception that you have to produce a prototype to participate in the Conrad Challenge. I just want to kind of make that aware that they do have to show graphic representation of their idea and their concept, but they don't actually have to build such a customized um, prototype, if you will. So Claude's example is great, but I don't want that to scare everybody away like, oh, well, we don't have the resources or we don't have the funding. We don't have a shop to actually build our innovation. So they have to clearly show their innovation um, on paper and using things like Tinkercad.com and CAD. Um, even Photoshop, and we've even gotten some sketches of innovations that have made it pretty far in the challenge. Um, so I just want to clear that up a little bit so we don't scare anyone away. No, that's a good point, Molly. I uh, co completely agree. <clears throat> in addition to that, there are people, there are teams that actually prove their how it would work, and they don't necessarily do a prototype. But being able to have some evidence base to, to, to actually prove that their idea will work is actually an absolute benefit, but it does not, correct, does not have to be a fully functional operational prototype. There's many of them are a theoretical based, but they're also proving that the theory would work. Uh, sometimes it's through math, sometimes it's through models, uh, <clears throat> but it's amazing what the kids are able to do. Okay, next slide, Molly. Okay, so Molly, you want to take over with the website since you have the website and show them a little bit about the Conrad Challenge in regards to where to go. Um, it might be a little easier for you to take over from this side, from your Absolutely. side. Absolutely. Um, let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Everybody can still see my screen okay? I can yes. see it. Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this is the Conrad Challenge homepage. 
Um, if you go to the challenge right here at the top, um, you will get all the information for the challenge. So this is all the detailed information of each round of the challenge, what the students will do to participate in the challenge, to register for the challenge, um, the categories of the challenge. You'll go here and we are running um, our four normal categories, which is aerospace and aviation, health and nutrition, energy and environment, cybersecurity and technology. And then we have two special categories again this year. We have um, transforming education through technology um, brought to you by Smart Technologies and um, Foundation for a Smoke-Free World, another partner of ours is um, um, decreasing and stopping the use of vaping products. So there's a category for vaping they want to eliminate smoking and tobacco use so there is another category for repurposing farmlands from growing tobacco to growing something else or from using tobacco in other applications um, that are more healthy for us all so if you click here you'll get an overview of the category um, now the resources that claude is discussing you can get to over here in resources and it is um, the no box toolbox. So Claude, you yeah. can take this back away. Can you scroll down a little bit so I can just, uh, show them? <clears throat> so just round one. Um, uh, uh, Molly, could you go back to the page you were on? I want, the sh I want people to see the three questions first and then I'm gonna go to the, to the things. So one of the really cool things about, um, so let's suppose you're just starting and considering that you might want to do this or not. If you scroll a little, a little bit more, uh, this year, uh, to the three questions, I think it's a little further down, uh, right there. So what challenge does your product or service solve? What are the key features of your innovation? And how is your innovation different from other products or services? So um, you have you know, a few weeks to go ahead and, well, I'm sorry, almost a month to complete that. And it's three questions and that's it. That's all they have to do, and then they go into uh, round two, uh, and then they, they, it's a little more involved, and they have a little bit more time. So using those three questions as the prompt, you know, what's out there that does it? What's the problem? And uh, how is yours innovative? And like, what key features? If we can go back to the page that you were on before, uh, Molly, you know what the um, uh, Conrad Challenge uh, videos? Okay, so when you go to the NoBox Toolbox, and she's gonna scroll down now, um, the way it's set up here, it's all on the website. So <clears throat> there's, so looking over here, right? So you can see getting started. So this is a little intro video, this process, and the process in layman's terms, it's real simple. It's just a, a visual representation of kids that are trying to collaborate, come up with ideas, and then actually uh, agree on it, right? So simple materials are listed there. Uh, and then <clears throat> scrolling down a little bit um, uh, where you see uh, module two, that's a, a big one in regards to, and I think this is as a former coach and someone that deals with this on a daily basis, uh, most kids, most adults will just skim through the problem and start right and they start going into a solution. And, and, and that's where they get stuck. They, 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 they think their invention has been invented. Uh, they get stuck in how to make it better. And I would say nine out of 10 times, it's really understanding the problem. And the problem uh, is something that every individual in the team should kind of like really be on the same page with. So there's a module that takes you through that and it has, a comp and it has at the bottom of the page, you see uh, worksheets that actually accommodate that. So then once you figure out the problem, you can go into module three, which is to the right middle, I'm sorry, to the left middle, remix and improve. And that's, uh, that's, th that is actually used for it, each individual student to do their own individual uh, research, post it up there, and see what's valid, and see which ones that they think uh, they can build from. And then you go into the best uh, team solution. And these are all very short videos that have a, a worksheet. And by the end of the best solution video, uh, the kids within a very short period of time, we're talking on average about four to six hours total, um, uh, they should be able to answer the three questions and feel like, you know what, this is a team collaboration. 
and uh, and be able to um, uh, produce something moving forward. So basically, uh, what you're doing is you're walking these teams through, through these videos. You're walking these teams and and the coaches uh, through the through a, a design process. That's what that's the way you if you know anything that you want to design, you have to go through this 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 process. Right. And, and like we were talking about before, Mitchell, is uh, you can go on the internet and find out the design process. I think what's unique about this is, this is the actual methods of being able to communicate and not talk at this time and post your own work and, and read someone else's work and then come together. And this, is, this has been inspired by Google uh, Sprints and, uh, and they use this worldwide. Uh, companies use this, this process worldwide. So, We've been able to modify that so it can be in the uh, the educational and, and innovation sector. So we're really excited about that. Okay, uh, scroll down a little more, uh, Molly. Once they're able to get their best solution and they present it, uh, you see round two. Um, round two has some helpful things too. So one of the things that teams struggle with sometimes is you know project management tools. Uh, also, like who's doing what? When is it going to be due? What are you supposed to do? And and these modules are really modeled by industry that are like, like tutorials on how to use certain specific sheets and everything from a bill of materials and so on and so forth. One of the real cool things about the Conrad Challenge, it's, it's actually one of the requirements, but nothing to be intimidated by, uh, is an intellectual property protection, right? So we actually have resources to everything from, uh, if you could scroll up a little bit, uh, Molly. Uh, this is for an excellent resource right here on something that we partnered up with that provides a step-by-step -step understanding that I didn't create, but I, I pointed in, in, in this direction that teaches anybody that knows nothing about intellectual properties how to get started, where to go, and then we're here to help them as well. And then once they do that, some teams actually have apps. So you have um, a module 11 and 12. One is to publish to a Google store, and the other one's to publish to Apple store. Apple. And there are kids that are doing it. It's super cool. <clears throat> so this is the meat of the competition. I mean, of the time that they're going to spend. Uh, Molly, uh, the due date is in January. I can't remember the actual due date for um, for permission of round two. Okay. So how it works is I'm going to share another screen with you. Um, you will go to the challenge. And to get started, you'll need to form your teams. Teams are two to five students. You have to have a team of two. This is a group, group challenge here. So uh, two to five students, ages 13 to 18. So once you assemble your group, you're going to pick one of your teammates to be your team captain. And that person um, will be the sole connection to the registration, if you will. Um, all teams are encouraged to communicate very closely together, obviously. Um, they will download this student guide right here. This guide is um, the holy grail of all instructions. So I recommend they read through this entire guide. It will walk them through everything that's required for the whole challenge. Um, all the deadlines are in there as well, and it's a step-by-step -step easy instructions to follow. Then they'll click here to register their team and it will bring them to our um, portal. They will register their team and then this is the team captain information. The team captain will start it. They'll put their information and register their team and they will go here. Let me just sign in as a student. Sorry, my account is like half admin, half student, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, this is what they will see as a student, um, and this already has a test in it. Um, once they get in there, they'll answer some more questions. It's very user-friendly. They'll answer some more questions, and they will actually do their investor pitch in here, so they'll answer their four questions about their product and submit it. And then their teammates will add their information as well. And then their entries, so their round one investor pitches, which is 
getting all of their team's information in, all of their signed permission slips from their parents, because most of them are minors, we have to get that. Um, we'll get into the system and then it gets reviewed and vetted and moved on to round two. Um, so round one's pretty, pretty simple. It is the meat of the competition because they have to come up with their innovation. Um, the deadline for round one is November 1st um, by the end of that day. Um, once the team submits though, we start vetting them. So if a team submitted today, we're gonna review it and then pass them through to round two if they check all the requirements and they have a valid innovation. So this is kind of, we want teams to get in there early and submit early um, because they will have an advantage of moving to round two um, sooner than waiting to the deadline. So Plus they can take advantage of any coaching you give them, right? Exactly, they, get, they just get farther in the process. Um, once they get into round two, they will complete, they will do the business plan portion of round two. There is a fee for round two, it's $399. Um, we do offer discounts, so if, if you are a Title I school or if your school has 10 teams or five teams, you know, we offer discounts. So don't let this um, scare you away. Email here so we can um, try and help you out. Um, again, all of this is in the student guidebook as well. Round two is, the deadline for round two is January 3rd. So the kids will, upon submission and getting into round two, all the way to January 3rd, be working on their business plan. Um, and those then get reviewed and judged by industry experts. So that's where they get a lot of feedback from people who actually work in aerospace, people who work at the CDC um, in health, people who work in the energy market. So they, they get a lot of feedback. So even if they don't make it to the finals, they become what we call Conrad innovators. They, they stay in our system and we continue to help them along. So I don't want anyone to think that we just take the five finalists and that's it. We are a big, big network um, and we connect all of the kids um, and want all of them to succeed in their innovations for sure. Um, we do take the top five in each category to the Innovation Summit where they will present like Shark Tank um, on a stage in front of a panel of judges and they will get judged and d go through a Q&A, short Q&A session. Um, and then they are selected the Pete Conrad Scholars and the Power Pitch winners. And our prizes this year are still um, coming in, but you can check out our prizes. We have um, scholarship prizes, um, intellectual property prizes, Tons of stuff. So we definitely want to see these kids continue their innovations, go to get higher education at, at great universities, um, and we want them all to succeed. So this is kind of the prize prize list. Um, I think that that's, did I get everything, Claude? I think I got everything, sorry. No, okay. Yeah, it's a lot of information, but all, I know all, I just kind of like all, dumped it all out there. But um, Claude, do you want to go back to your presentation? Yeah, yeah. If you could, you okay. could just go to the the, the resources again. Um, the, oh. um, yeah, just go to the resources again, and then we'll we'll open up to questions. Go to the no no box. Uh, I just want to scroll to where it says the 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 no the Slack thing, right? Okay, so one of the things that I, I wanted to share with the group is um, this is optional. First off, this is optional. This is off the website. Um, uh, we use a Slack channel uh, to actually support teams. And uh, I have three video conferences. Um, one I already did this morning was awesome uh, from a team from Texas, super cool. And they just, like, they, you know, this team was a little intimidated by the process. and. And ironically enough, Molly mentioned it. He goes, oh, we don't know if we can make a prototype. And I'm um, like, well, that's, 
you don't need to make a prototype. You need to be able to, to, to visualize it, sometimes pictures and, and mock-ups and, and testing. So they felt a lot better about that. So, so um, um, the actual channel is there to help people directly, help teams directly, and also uh, uh, smart technologies, Dell technologies uh, is involved uh, with direct support. So the, the smart technologies in, in speci uh, specifically provide a lot of the support that's needed to actually help them um, uh, move forward with their projects. So they've been, they've been amazing mm -hmm. at the support that they've provided. Uh, really cool stuff. So, and um, with your registration into the Conrad Challenge, Smart Technologies is also offering you a download to their learning software suite. Um, it is a software that is driven to help communication and connectivity in the classroom. So if you do not know anything about smart technologies, they have a ton of cool whiteboards and I know teachers like get super excited about the whiteboards you write on and then it texts everybody the notes and um, I definitely encourage all teachers to go check out Smart Technologies, um, their software. Um, it's, a, it's a great asset they offer to let us download um, and use their software. So I encourage teachers to go check that out as well. Absolutely. Uh, is there a way for people to uh, comment and uh, for us to see or answer any questions that anybody might have? Sure. Uh, sure. First of all, anybody could unmute themselves. Uh, and if you have a question in a second, anybody could type into on the on the bottom of if you uh, cursor over your screen, there's something on the bottom of your screen called chat. And if you click on that, you can send a message out and we can we can uh, answer those questions also. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking like do you what were some of the winners last year? Wow, the, <laughs> they're all over the place because they're, you know, so many different categories. Or finals, um, right. Just maybe pick three or four. Okay, yeah, uh, Molly could probably help me out because they all kind of intertwine. But the ones that stick out are the ones that actually, there's actually people using them, right? Like there's, there's, um, there was this one team that's, that actually reused the uh, styrofoam for filters for water. And I thought that was so cool. And these kids just, used it as active, you know, instead of activated charcoal. Uh, and, and that was being used already. Um, Molly, can you think of some offhand that from last year you want to share? Yeah, I'm kind of at a disadvantage because I did not attend Summit last year. Oh, that's but, right. Because <laughs> I was on maternity leave. That's right, uh, that's right. I have McKenna here. McKenna, can you chime in? She was at Summit and she, we're also works with the for the Conrad Foundation, and McKenna is kind of our go-to lady for the students. So she does a lot of direct interaction with the students and the teachers. So, so, so I'm, I'm hearing you had your own challenge last year. Hi, uh, can you guys hear me? This is McKenna. Hi, McKenna. Yeah. I think uh, my favorite winner from last year that stood out the most to me was a. Uh, it was like sound waves that extinguished fires that yeah. team was called safe and they stood out because they were mostly younger students on the younger end of our spectrum i think we had some they were like 13 year olds so it was really cool and they won in the i want to say i want to say energy and environment mm -hmm. yes. um yeah but they did an awesome job so that's just the kind of thing that that they'll come up with, you know, I wouldn't have even thought that was possible. So, so there's also, so the Conrad challenge isn't just about an innovation of building something The students can also come up with a service. So some of the cool services I've seen actually turn into apps. They turn into like the more app development, but there was a service a few years ago that connected um, people with autism to people who needed to hire employees. Um, it, it was a kind of matching app. Um, that was a good one. Another one was connecting restaurants who have over excess of leftover food that all, obviously a lot goes to waste in our country of leftover food, connected restaurants to local food banks so that they could get their food 
to food banks and someone could actually consume it before it went to waste. So that's some of the more service um, ideas that we've seen instead of actually building a, a widget or a product. Um, so just keep in mind that service is also its product or service. Um, the service, most of the time the kids turn them into apps because that's the generation we're in. Um, but it can be a service idea as well. You know, and just to piggyback, uh, Mitchell, one of the things that, uh, that just impresses me every time I go up there is how many kids and teachers come up that aren't necessarily the winners, but they're just so appreciative of the opportunity. And this is what they say. This is just summing it up, that, that what we've provided for some schools is the ability to, to open their mind to the possibilities that they can actually solve, that we can empower them to, to solve their own problems. And it's, it's, it's actually, I think it's the ultimate compl compliment. And one group uh, sticks out from two years ago is uh, uh, four kids from Nigeria. They looked like they were middle school kids. They were real short. They barely spoke English and they came right off the bus and they like, and they looked at me and go, oh, look, it's, it's him. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? You're, you're that one person that saw the video? <laughs> so so the, the point is that, they, that one of those kids actually spoke in the United Nations uh, on behalf of the foundation and had a standing ovation uh, in regards to how this process opened his mind to the possibility of, of innovation. And, and to me, that this is why we do it. It's not necessarily the teams that win or stand out, but it's the camaraderie when these kids come together. And Molly and McKenna have seen it. When these kids start talking to each other, it is just, you just want to be a fly on the wall and just see them interacting because they, they all are speaking the same language, you know? And they're not just a bunch of nerds. They're very articulate. They're, they're, they're energetic. They're, they're future business scientists, engineers, uh, mm -hmm. uh, trying to solve real problems. So being able to provide an opportunity for them to, to not just go ahead and protest on global warming, but to be part of the solution. Because to be honest, it, you know, I have no problem with protesters, but that's just part of the problem, right? Are you trying just to get a politician to change something that they don't even know how to change because they don't know how to solve the problem? These kids are trying to solve the problem. So it's a whole different tier. And I think it's our responsibility to provide the, the tools for them to be successful. So I do think that the foundation feels strongly that this is, this is our present. This isn't our future. These kids, when you give them an opportunity to talk, some special things happen. And, and, mm -hmm. and to echo what you were saying before, Mitchell, yes, we do keep in touch with a lot of these kids. And a lot of them, and Molly can talk a little bit about the alumni group, is mm -hmm. just unbelievable. And I'll, I'll give her a second to speak about that. But it, these kids are passionate. And they come back and they share. Molly, you want to talk a little bit about the the the, the, the alumni group? Absolutely. So, any team that successfully completes round two, which is the business plan business plan phase of the challenge, becomes what we call a Conrad Innovator. Once you are a Conrad Innovator, you go into our network um, and you can become an alumni. Now we have two kind of classifications of alumni. You know, we keep the alumni Conrad innovators who are still in high school as kind of our ambassadors to bring more students to encourage um, more participation in their schools to mentor teams they might not keep competing every year but they they mentor other teams and then we have the graduated alumni who are actually amazingly smart i mean they're at stanford they're at harvard they're working at tableau they are working for google um, they are all over the map so we connect them the alumni network sends out a monthly newsletter um, hopefully in a year we will have a platform for the alumni to communicate back and forth with to do meetups um, that's we awesome. also have an extensive network of judges, subject matter experts. As you know, our founder, Nancy Conrad, um, is very well connected. So Nancy has an affinity for 
connecting with the students and keeping track of them. We often get emails from Nancy that say, remember three years ago, the team who had that one invention that used um, sound waves? And we're like, yeah, Nancy, let, let us dig through the network. She's like, oh, well, I met someone and I talked to someone and I need to know that team because they need to talk to um, this person that I met um who's chairing a foundation for global warming it's it's amazing nancy is so well connected and somehow she remembers all the students and kind of helps connect the dots further so um like i said we keep very close tabs on our students who have gone through the process and we kind of pride ourselves in that a little bit so hopefully with our new tools and we're always involving our tools um, to further collaboration. Um, Smart Technologies is also launching a new platform for communication called Catalyst. Um, so our teams will see a little bit more of that um, interaction in the weeks to come, hopefully. That's right. Yeah. Really exciting. So it's, it's, it's cool that you're able to take schools that that don't then have programs to get kids thinking about the issues that are affecting society or affecting their <coughs> that are affecting their own communities, um, and that they don't have programs to teach kids the the innovation process and the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial process. And through your coaching and your methodology, you're able to help those schools then build teams, and then those teams become the groups that that's the network of people that as they become adults are the ones who are going to really transform society. Yeah, that's, that's an excellent point, Mitchell. Uh, one of the things that we've had teams that have been homeschooled, right? And some of these uh, parents, they, they don't, they don't, they're not innovators and engineers and they, they send their kids to this competition and, uh, and it's laid out in such a user-friendly way where you can go through the process and really understand how to go to that next step. So all you need is an internet connection, you know, a computer, some paper, pencil, and, and just be willing to, to put the steps in. So if, if Mitchell, I don't know how much time we have. I can uh, spend a couple of minutes just looking at the why and, and sliding down so we can bring it oh, all yeah. together. Yep. Yep. Okay. So if I may, um, uh, some of the, go to the slide before, uh, Molly. Good. Okay. So again, uh, just to, one of the things that the NoBox toolbox is, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a box of no tools, ironically, that's no box, right? It, it, and it goes back to it, the communication, collaboration, and the leadership, right? And being able to provide, you know, the tools for these guys to be future leaders, right? And the methodologies that we actually show in these videos, uh, I'm gonna, now the next slides are kinda, kind of you know, bring it all together. So I'll just flip real uh, quick. Quickly, if you go to the next slide, uh, so why? You know, most of the time when you're presenting, I mean, you're, you're going through a team, it's it's usually uh, a bunch of people talking like it's a stock market, right? And you're, hey, hey, yeah, my idea, and then people are talking over, and usually the the alpha individuals are the ones that are taking over, and, then the, and that's what tends to happen, even with adults. So uh, being able to have a way where uh, everybody is heard equally and being able to capture it and collaborate is, is the big why for me. And, and I've seen it, uh, it done in a very respectful way. And uh, I can be long-winded myself and be like the used car salesman at times. So this, for me, helps me when we're even doing like department meetings so I can hear others and see what people are doing. So that's kind of like the why. Next slide, please. Okay, what is it? Okay, so it's honestly based on protocols. And in this case, if you're going from all the way from an idea and it says test and build a prototype but when i say prototype and this is something that molly alluded to i'm not talking about a fully working prototype it can be a mock-up or a visualization or duct tape and cardboard to represent what you're trying to do so i think it's very important that we had we uh, identify that it's not a fully work it, it can be but it doesn't have to be but it's really about and, in, and, with, and this is basically a way of of creating things that's sweeping the whole world now. It's called various terms. I mean, some people call it agile, some people call it um, lean, uh, some people, uh, now I just forgot the third name that people call it, but yeah. this is, but this this idea of 
you know, building something or product, creating something quickly that you can show to, to prospective users or prospective customers. All about efficiency, and, yeah. And yeah. time efficiency, so a resource. Of, and Agile is actually a good example, but it actually ends out, it's like in a different place. Uh, a sprint that we're showing here. Sprint, are, right, right. It's more usually in the front end where mm -hmm. let's, let's see, like if we're looking at the clock behind me, right? Let's see if we should do this and let's, let's make, be on the same page. And then if we agree, then we'll spend the rest of the time doing it. So it's, it's really a quick way to get everybody on the same page with the problem, the topic, uh, what's out there that tries to solve it, and then having input from everyone. But it goes back to like what you were saying, Mitchell, all about protocols and about being quiet when you have to be quiet, uh, listening, reading, evaluating in a specific way. And what's really cool about it is the steps are the same for each milestone. So if you're trying to identify a problem, it's the same as prior solutions. It's the same as the best solution. So uh, a little more on that in a different time, I guess. Uh, next, please. Uh, so I'm gonna flip through these real quick. Well, Molly's gonna flip through it real quickly. But uh, this is an example of, uh, of a case study that I'm just gonna just show the steps. Uh, we were asked a week before school if we should have a genius bar at our school. And, and, uh, and I said, well, maybe we need to get the right stakeholders to decide if this is a good, good, uh, good way to go. So we ran a sprint. So next slide. The first thing we needed to do is, let's do a survey to see if kids really wanna do this, have a genius bar, support it for adults, I mean, for other kids and maybe teachers as well. And then if they were gonna need it, like what, what would they want? So there was a survey that was done and they found out, yes, more than 50%, and these are the different types of uh, skill sets they would like to acquire. Next slide. Okay, so the first step, in just like in any sprint, is understand, and what's the unique thing here? Everybody's working independently. Everybody's got a sheet of paper, there's no computer, it's a, it's a marker, it's a sheet, and it's there focused on that paper. Next. Uh, they all put it up, they, they generate questions as a team, and then they narrow their focus from, let's say, six, six per person to six per team. And there's a methodology of deciding and votes and so on and so forth. Next. <clears throat> questions, being able to ask the right questions, these are the questions that need to be answered for us to decide if we should do this is, is such a big deal. And you could apply it to any innovation or any project. Next slide. Prior solutions, don't reinvent the wheel. Like what's out there? Uh, what do we like that's out there? And being able to notate that, and that's what the blue stickers represent. Like, you know what, we really like this school. We like what Yale did over there. We like what Apple, but not necessarily this part. Next slide. So then everybody does their own individual sketch. And this is one of my personal, personal secrets. I hate sketching. I am so self-conscious about sketching. So here's the good thing about it. Do you have to be a master at sketching to do this? And as you can see, we're looking at stick figures, uh, little diagrams, some descriptors. That's your best. That's your best solution. And then from there, you have uh, you know, stickies in the bottom, and th that's basically other members that are giving feedback, but not verbal. Something that can be captured. And then the last step is, and this is the final two, by the way. Uh, they put blue stickers to represent. You know what? I think this is where we want to go. So we have individual work. We have teams that are collaborating and putting stuff on the sheet. And then we have a vote, a silent vote that occurs at the very end just to, to narrow their focus. And, at the, and there is a little bit of collaboration verbally, but it doesn't, it's not at the forefront. Next slide. And then the best solution, presenting the best solution. One of the things that I really like about this process too is how would it actually work with the person? One thing is making something, but how would the user interface occur? Next slide. <clears throat> and uh, here's a prototype. And this is an example of what Molly was referring to. You don't have to have a full prototype. It can be digital. And this was a, just a Trello board with some functionality and some skill sets. So this was the example of their prototype. Next slide. <clears throat> Storybook. This is what I was referring to about user interface. Like how would this work? Like step one, step two, step three, when the customer came in. That is something that I can honestly tell you I think most people don't do, and it's hard to visualize how it would work. Next slide. So this is an example. This video actually shows the interaction of a student with the student and how it would work. What you can't see to the far left are, are the stakeholders. There's the administrator, there's the head of technology, there is a, a parent, a student, 
that's actually seeing, hey, look, is this something we should do? Super cool stuff. Next slide. So basically what you just saw was a beginning to end of, in this case, there were 60 people involved and they were able to narrow their focus uh, so they could come up with one kind of uh, cohesive decision, right? So um, that's an example uh, of how a sprint can be used to help a team go from point A to point B. And that's what the modules are for. Uh, to be able to answer those specific questions, to guide them. And in, and in this yeah. case, for that sprint, how how long did that last? Was that okay. a week? That's an yes. That was a week, and 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 that's a wow. great question. Uh, so it was a forty-five minute section session, four days. So it was a total of uh, I want to say about a, you know, yeah, no, it was it was a week of class. So if you have forty-five minute uh, sessions is one week of class without so, including the presentation. So basically using your methodology, a teacher can teach their kids how to come up with, you know, a concrete idea for a product in four 45 minute sessions. So Mitchell, I could tell you, but let's, let me prove it to you right now. I actually, yeah, I don't believe it. I go in the summer uh, and I teach teachers to go from an idea to a working prototype in nine days. Okay. Granted, they have, all, they have the whole day to do it. But this is the magic. On day four, this is when they have to decide what their best solution is going to be, right? So on day four, I give them 90 minutes to come up with their best solution using this methodology. And on average, I would say nine out of 10 teams come up with a design in 90 minutes that they actually have constructed the following week. I've been doing this for a long time. This is why I'm sold on this process because they're able to understand all the steps and they connect it, they condense it, and they're all on the same page. And now it's just a matter of design, build, test, present. And, and this is where it comes together. I do feel strongly though, it does take a lot of interaction and feedback, just like a pitching coach. And this is why I feel so passionate about sharing and, and providing assistance in the process because this isn't easy. Anytime you do something different than what you normally do, uh, it is kind of like an act of God. I, it took me a while to get even my department on board with this. Now they all do it. I have my computer science teachers doing it, my biomedical, my business program, engineering program. We have 350 students that are involved in projects and they all use the methodology to, to make decisions. Very impressive, very impressive. Molly, do you want to add anything? Uh, I, Molly was able to part, uh, to see, uh, we, uh, we, we went to a, a workshop, we actually ran a workshop, and she was able to see the participants first time. Uh, what was your impression, Molly, on how this process can help people? Um, I think we're giving young adults tools to not only make decisions, but to better communicate with each other. So... Um, I think that's a skill set that we're kind of lacking in the upcoming generation because they're they're very tech um, <laughs> driven. Um, so I mean, I go places and I see young adults just on their phones. I'm like, do you guys even know how to talk to each other? What are you doing over there? Like, <laughs> you're all out on a Friday night at Chili's and none of you are talking to each other. Um, I feel like it's. It's good decision making and collaboration tools. Um, I think there's skill sets that that need to be taught in the classroom, and I think this method is genius um, for getting them all to communicate and get on the same page. And like Claude said, it's a good mix of individual work, teamwork, and collaboration, which is what what I love about the process. I think I think this is real life application. I mean. Uh, me and my husband kind of make decisions this way, pros and cons list, and then we kind of sticky note it out, like, okay, should we, should we do this, or should we do this? Or? See, see in, in my family, we just vote, and my wife gets two votes, and I get one vote. <laughs> well, at least you get a vote. I don't get a vote. <laughs> any, any questions, Mitchell, for us? Well, so I just think that the idea that it, that if a school decides or if a group of teachers decide that they want to enter this Conrad Challenge, the fact that they learn how to run kids through a program like this, 
um, so that so that you know the fast sprint and the and the design thinking, um, and at the same time they're building kids who uh, who when they finish high school they go on for great things. I think that's fantastic. I love it. Hey, thank you. Thanks for letting us share today. So uh, so basically. You have the the URL if, if uh, people seeing this video or, or people live here uh, want to enter the Conrad Challenge. The uh, it's Con ConradChallenge.org, correct? Correct. Yes, ConradChallenge.org, and uh, yeah, Molly's putting it up there now, and then that that will take you to the to the main site. And we're really excited about the website this year. It's, it's so intuitive, so easy to go through and everything is there, whereas in the past that has not been. So we're really excited about that. Great and job. Molly, uh, what's the, what's the, it's info at Conrad challenge for, for yes. if anybody has a direct question. Yes. Questions can be emailed to info at Conrad challenge.org. Yeah. Correct. Great. Well, thank you. Um, I, this was, uh, I, I, you were on last year, but uh, but the website is so much better this year, and it looked it's really such a straightforward program. Um, and I was excited last year, but I'm even more excited this year, and I can't wait uh, to come down to Florida and and meet some of the kids who are doing these. I look forward to seeing you, Mitchell. I'm very excited about that. Okay, well, um, I'm going to sign off then for Edgehead Interactive, and. Um, you know, Molly and Claude, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, everybody else, I hope to see you next week. Thank you. Good night. Good night.